Join us today on Beyond the Lair, where we have a conversation with Lindsay Stock, Director of Sales and Marketing, Western Bayshore, Vancouver, British Columbia. We discuss honoring the land, core values, promoting Indigenous culture, experience in creating a corporate culture based on knowledge, education, and respect. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Beyond the Lair. I am one of your co-hosts, Gina Jackson Montgomery. My traditional name is Satasia, and I'm a proud member of the Seashelt Nation. I'd like to introduce my co-host. Hi, everybody. I'm Dean Montgomery. I'm Cree Métis from Saskatchewan, and here we are in Vancouver today in the unceded territories of the Squamish, Tsleil-Waututh, and Musqueam First Nations. We are very excited today to have a conversation with a very good friend of ours, but also one of our guest coaches for the Bears Lair TV show, and also one of our lead sponsors for the Western Bayshore. And her name is Lindsay Stock. She is the Director of Marketing and Sales for the Western Bayshore and has been working there for about seven and a half years. And we're going to get into how we met very shortly, but we want to know a little bit about you. Welcome to our show. Awesome. Thank you so much for having me. I'm looking forward to this. Um, so uh, a little bit about me. I am a BC girl by nature. Um, I was born up north in a place called Terrace. Um, some people know about mm. it. Some people don't, but it's beautiful. Uh, and I've been at the Bayshore for about seven and a half years, but have been in the hospitality industry for about 20 some odd years now. And I think we'll talk about that, but uh, it's been an interesting career. It's a great industry. So did you, so we were just in Terrace, BC. We talked about that. We were facilitating one of our youth entrepreneur dream camps. So it's such a beautiful area full of industry and it's grown exponentially now. Um, so I can't believe that we met somebody that was born there. Um, and it's, it's such a pleasure to have you here. What kind of hospitality industry experience did you have and how did you end up from Terrace to the Western Bay Shore in Vancouver? Yeah, I guess I, it's a bit of an adventure. So I was born in Terrace. Um, I grew up all over the province. So I've lived in Prince George and Kamloops. Um, my grandparents were always in Vancouver. So we eventually made our way back to Vancouver. Um, and I finished high school in Richmond, BC. Um, I went to the University of British Columbia rather briefly. I, um, it kind of wasn't for me. Uh, but eventually found my way to the University of Guelph in the hospitality management program where I have a Bachelor of Commerce with honors um, from, when did I graduate there? 2005. Um, and the way I kind of ended up there was, I think by, I, I was working at a grocery store. I wasn't getting hours. I had a girlfriend who worked at a restaurant and said, I think I can get you a job here. Like you could be a hostess. And I was like, oh, that's great because I need money to pay for school. So um started working at a restaurant and then started serving and then I became a manager and then I decided to go to school for that. Um, I, my ideas were more food and beverage focused than hotel focused and that's where I really started my career. Um, after university, everyone kind of wanted to go work in hotels and I wanted to have my own catering company. Um, but I slowly fell into the hotel side of the business Um through working in restaurants and getting to know people just um, as you do. You chat with tables, you chat with regulars. And eventually one of my regulars said, I think you'd be really good in sales. Um, come work for me at the Marriott. Um, that was my first hotel job about 10, 12 years ago. Um, so I started as a catering sales manager and then have grown from there. So I was a catering sales manager, then a sales manager, senior sales manager, director of sales. Um, in the middle of that, I kind of moved from the Marriott over to the Westin and then now have been the director of sales and marketing for a little over two years at the Westin Bayshore, one of Canada's very best hotels. So. The Western Bay Shore is such a beautiful, beautiful hotel. Can you tell us what makes the hotel special, the location and the energy that surrounds that? 
Absolutely. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's such an iconic hotel right on the waterfront, um, just outside of Stanley Park. Um, the seawall goes right around the property. We do, we have uh, both an indoor and outdoor pool and the outdoor pool is situated in a 14,000 square foot Canadian Wildlife Federation certified habitat garden um, that we get to stay and play in. Um, and then we get to continue to enhance just overall wellness is a big focus for us. We're being a, a Weston hotel. That's really key to what we do. So we have some programs like Run Weston, where we do guided runs along the seawall, um, talking about Stanley Park and the different things that you can do in Stanley Park. We have a biking program. We have a liquid yoga program, which is floating on the indoor and outdoor pools. It's rather challenging, um, but very fun. Um, and then we do a lot of sustainability initiatives, Um Earlier this year, in February, we removed all single-use uh, plastic water bottles from the property, um, and we were counting earlier this week we, that we so far diverted 46,000 water bottles from the landfill, which is really exciting for us. Wow. That's great. You know, we had uh, our contestants on the Bears Lair come and stay with you. Thank you, as you well know, as an incredible sponsor. But, you know, you're talking about the wellness of of the hotel and, and – um, I think that one thing that contestants really love, and the contestants, as we Gina named, um, it's coopetition. So even though they're competing, they became really good friends. But I think anytime you become good friends, or you get to connect with someone. It's, it's you know where you are and the, what the environment is, and this you know being Indigenous people and entrepreneurs from all over Canada. Like, what is it special that you've done there to really, really foster this environment? Yeah, I think um, we continue to look for opportunities on how we can work best with the Indigenous people, both through hosting, but through reconciliation action, which is something, you know, Gina and I have talked about quite a bit. Um, last year, we were we successfully installed an Indigenous pollinator garden on property, um, which was really, we thought, a good way to um, introduce some of our guests into what the Coast Salish cultures are. And to, to engage them in learning a little bit about maybe getting interested in finding out more on their travels. Um, being a big branded hotel, we have a lot of guests coming from overseas. You know, we get locals as well. But just trying to get people interested and excited about learning more um, and then fostering that culture and awareness. So how, how can we be a good partner to the people that, you know, this is this is the land that we reside on. How can we be good partners to everyone? Excellent. We had, we're having Keith Henry as one of our, um, as one of our guests from ITAC. And he talks about experiences. So when people come to Vancouver and they want, they want an experience. So they said indigenous, he said indigenous tourism has gone up 23%. And where other indigenous, tour, where other non-Indigenous tourism has gone up about 13%. So I know it's very important that um, that as a business you follow trends and you have such a unique location that is on the unceded territory of the Musqueam and Squamish and tsleil -Tooth people. And you really want to promote that experience as well as enjoying the beautiful luxuries that you offer at a hotel. So the way that you and I met was you had an idea and your organization had an idea to have an indigenous garden. And that was really important because I know you've got the barrel saunas and I know you've got the all of the amenities that are so beautiful. Why was it important to have something like that? We'll get into all of the another, other initiatives, but I'm just thinking chronologically how we met. Why was it important to you to think about something like that with some space that would, could be utilized? Mm. Um, so in my career, originally I, I took care of the Indigenous markets, and so I would go to a lot of different trade shows and events, and I got to know um, some really amazing Indigenous people from all across Canada and became good friends. And I... I got to experience such kindness, um, such um, genuine experiences, and really opened my eyes, I felt personally, to um, just the beauty of all these different cultures um, and, and, and people, just such warmth. Um, and I thought, you know, wouldn't it be great to showcase this to other people who, maybe, who, who haven't had the opportunity to travel the same way that I have? Um, and so how could we open 
the door to the conversation um, using our platform. And so with our expansive garden, uh, one of the thoughts was, could we take a corner of it and really speak to the true heritage of this land on the unceded territories of the Squamish, Tsleil-Waututh, and Musqueam First Peoples and showcase some of what what the heritage really is and you know, just maybe start the conversation. So um, that's where the idea for the garden itself came. We already have the garden, but how could we tie it back to the culture? Um, and so what we did is um, it's all Indigenous plants and all of the signage is around the English name, the Latin name, the Squamish name, and the Hunkanim uh, name. And then also a little bit about what the plant would have been used for. So it's a pollinator garden, which is great because we also have honeybees on property. So uh, we work with C. Spice on this project. Um, she lives nearby. And so she comes by here and there and checks on it. But I remember the day it was being installed. She was so excited uh, because the she's like, there must be bees around here. There, there's bees coming over. And I said, oh, we have bees. Like it's, it's really part of our overall footprint, but tying it all together and then just trying to showcase it for for other people to get excited the way we get excited. I think that's such a a great initiative and and in respect of the the spirit of procurement Cease Weiss is a proud member of the C of the Squamish Nation and her family were one of the first inhabitants that that had that territory. So she felt very connected to it and she is an amazing human that does um, expert in community gardens and knows indigenous plants like Devil's Club and things like that that are medicinal to indigenous peoples around the area. And it's so nice to, again, create an experience for those people. Um, the guests internationally, nationally, regionally, locally, what have you. Um, and I can't wait for the garden to bloom because that was just last year and yes. we've had a very early spring this year. Let's go from there to creating experiences for Indigenous Day, Indigenous Month, September 30th, because I know it was really important to you. And I love hearing the story about you going out and taking a culture like with the Indigenous markets and giving your experiences and how you felt about bringing those experiences to yourself and then bringing into the West End. Um, we connected again about traditional dancers mm -hmm. and then also um, traditional arts. So maybe you can explain what the West End did last year and what they're going to continue doing this year. Yeah. And so um, we, we do, we do a host of different activities and activations especially over the summer months where we see a lot more um, leisure guests coming into the market, uh, a lot more international guests as well. And so one of the things we we were really passionate about, and Gina, you were so key in this, um, we added a, a performance uh, that features both dancers, singers, drummers on Saturday nights. Um, and it's coming back again this year. So uh, 6 p.m. on Saturdays, we do it, weather permitting, in our courtyard. If not, we do it in the lobby. Um, but it's just one of the activations that we do. And it's great to hear the stories behind the songs, um, the dances. Uh, you know, there's, there's a lot of, you know, who wrote the song, what the traditional words are, um, and opening it uh, up to the guests as well. So, you know, telling a little bit of story about the land. What is this land traditionally called? Um, who are the people who originally inhabited it? So um, that was really special. Um, something we did last year for the first year for Indigenous Peoples Day. We'll do uh, similar this year. Again, it's weather permitting, so we always hope for a sunny day, but we don't know. So it may be in the lobby. It may be um, in the courtyard. We'll just see what the what happens with the weather on that particular day. And then the other thing we added last, uh, last summer that's coming back again this year was a, a curriculum around Indigenous arts and crafts and storytelling. And so um, it's in the lobby at 11 a.m. on Sundays. And again, those are our highest transient guests. So we have families, we have people of all different demographics, and we have... Um, one of the elders come in, she brings crafts, she does things like cedar weaving, um, storytelling, um, wool weaving, all kinds of amazing things. And so it's really nice. We see youth engaging all the way through to more senior members of, of our guests. 
and they get to engage and hear some stories, but then they also get this piece to take with them as a memory of that experience. So, you know, it's, it's, it's amazing that, I mean, for you, you grew up in Terrace and you said PG and Kamloops. Mm -hmm. So you're in these, you know, real hubs of indigenous communities in BC and, you know, you get to Vancouver and of course it's very prevalent, but there's a lot more people as well. Mm -hmm. So what was the process like to bring, um, the corporate culture of the Marriott, you know, specifically to do this and, and, you know, for you, I'm sure it was quite natural, but how did that grow or evolve? Yeah. Um, you know, I think we've, we've hosted a lot of Indigenous events over the years at the, at the property. Um, but it's, our leadership team is very supportive of this. Um, we've had a number of conversations, um, but it's, it's also, it's, it, we believe it's the right thing to do. Um, we think it's a, it's a part of our platform and we have this ability, but it's also, it's an authentic experience. And, and just like you were saying with the, um, indigenous tourism, like it's an authentic experience that we can offer our guests and we don't want it to not be authentic. Like if we're going to do it, we want to do it the right way. Um, and so that's important to us. And so making sure we have the right partners, um, that we're, we're doing it in a way that's, um, educational, respectful, um, all the, all the things that it, are so important, um, but then providing that gateway to our guests to, to become more curious. And, and do you get, what's the feedback like you get from the guests? It's, it's been really positive. And mm -hmm. so I know we've seen people who've become really emotional because they're so moved um, by the different performances. Um, they're, they're so engaged with the crafts and like, oh, this is so cool. And then hearing the stories, um, you know, oh, that was such a cool experience. And then they're telling their friends and then they're, you know, the feedback's all been really positive. So it's, it's nice to see. I love that experiential learning um, and, and being a part of that because when you take your children, because it's really family focused, from the dancers that incorporate an experience because they go out and they they get the crowd involved and they get the crowd singing and drumming at the same time and singing and teaching words of the language. But also Alice Gus, who's who's one of the resident artists that comes in on Sundays. And again, what what is the date that it, these experiences are? So this year they will start for the summer on June 29th, 30th, so the, the long weekend, and then go through September 7th, 8th weekend. Um, Indigenous Peoples Day on June 21st will be in advance of that, but that's kind of the official program start dates. Right, and, and it really is about connection. Mm -hmm. And when you talk about storytelling, so I know that we've got a developing a curriculum with those artists and with those dancers about what the meaning and the core values are. And a lot of the core values of Indigenous people are respecting the environment, the land, the culture, the language, the elders. Um, there is not just those experiences, but you get so many conferences that are Indigenous-led organizations that come into the Westin. Can you tell us about some of those organizations and some of the events? One that I emceed last year, which was a um, Squamish staff acknowledgement event that was all red carpet, but I mean, just beautiful. But can you tell us what the draw is, number one, for these Indigenous organizations to come to your hotel? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I think we're very fortunate because we, we've we built a lot of these relationships. Um, and I mean, I, I do believe it's a lot of because we've done well, um, we're travels, right? So a lot of it is referral from other organizations that are saying like, oh, you should go here. You know, they 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 know what they're doing, which is I think we know what we're doing. So um, it's really positive. But it's, you know, national organizations that have annual meetings that come back year over year. Um other organizations like CCAB awards and things where they, they're coming in, um, usually in the fall. Um, we have some annual events that, that come throughout the year. I don't want to, I don't want to tell my competition all of my secrets. <laughs> um, but, you know, we have some really large organizations, educational organizations. Um, sometimes it's a government organization that's coming in. Um, but because, our team is fairly well versed at welcoming people. I think that's one of our our strengths, um, and then being flexible to work to work on these different events. We do have 
um, quite a large amount of meeting space. We have a very large ballroom. It's over 15,500 square feet. So it's one of the largest ones in Canada. And we've had groups come in and set up like a longhouse inside that ballroom. And so, you know, similar to this, it looks really nice. Um, and so when you're welcoming people and you're showing them, you know, this is what uh, having a meeting in, in Vancouver can look like, um, it's a great venue to do that. Perfect. I think one of our favorite people when we come to the Western Bay Shore is you have a gentleman right at right outside. Oh, yeah. It's an indigenous gentleman that's yes. been working forever. I mean, we've seen him for years. Mm -hmm. Tell us about that and, and maybe some ind other indigenous employees that you have or, and how you can encourage other indigenous people to come up if they're interested in the hospitality or management to come and, and talk to you. Yes. So Todd at our front door, he's been there longer than I have. I don't I don't actually know his start date, but he's wonderful. And he knows so many people in the community, um, just like yourselves. And if you come, he's there, you know, probably five, six days a week. Um, very busy. Uh, but the front door and running that driveway is not an easy task. Um, it's a lot of a lot of cars coming in and out, a lot of taxis, a lot of Ubers, a lot of buses and things. So he managed that manages that very well. But he also remembers people, which is such an important thing in the hospitality industry. If you can remember a face, a name, a welcome, that's so key. Um, I know our human resources team. We do we travel out to um, different colleges and different universities and programs to recruit. We hire um, a lot of people, um, especially for summer. So it's great for students, like for kind of like a summer summer work experience. Um, I know we we've gone to Native Education College. Um, we're at Capilano College. We we kind of circulate everything. So the best thing to do for someone who's interested is either attend one of those events, or we have a website, MarriottCareers.com, and that is a great way to apply for any jobs. Um, but you can, sh you can shoot over a resume as well. You always have to go through that portal. Sometimes we'll have a hiring fair as well, which I can always share. And I know um, we've worked on some newsletters and things as well that we can send out to Bears Lair um, subscribers so that they know when things are coming up if, if that's something that people are interested in. Yeah, oh, I remember when uh, we are filming the Bears Lair and uh, Dave Tuckerow came into town, and uh, he's one of the Bears, of course, and uh, yeah, an amazing guy. But he came up, and I think I think Todd and Dave gave each other a hug, right? And that yeah. was pretty nice to see. <laughs> yeah, well, and that's the thing. I mean, I it is nice. We have a lot of associates like Todd that have been at the hotel for mm -hmm. a long time, and so they remember people year over year. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the nicest things when people are coming back, whether it's just on their own or they're coming in for an event. It's that. Um, you know, hey, good to see you again. And and they're like, oh, your associates are so great. And, and they really are. They're wonderful. I, I think it's so important to have that's the first face that you see because a lot of your target market is organizations, of course, and, and large events, but they're housed with Indigenous people for so many different events. And to see that familiar face and affection and pride and that's what I see with Todd. I see a lot of pride in what he is doing. So, and what happened to the days when we just used to be able to walk in and say, here's my resume, may I speak to the manager? Um, those days don't happen anymore. And I know there's a lot of barriers when it comes um, and a lot of shyness that comes. So I think having a porthole helps, mm -hmm. but, um, but is there anything um, with the porthole or a resume that could help people have that tipping point of, of, Maybe they mentioned that they are Indigenous. I, I know a lot of resumes. I used to give out resumes. I didn't sell, just say, Gina Jackson, Seashell Nation member. Mm -hmm. I just said Gina Jackson. So does the Port Health say Indigenous descent? Is there a certain percentage or that, you know, percent that you would like to, to see happening or an increase in staff? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and there is. So um, on the it's when you go into the portal, you fill out a form. And there is something on on backgrounds. Um, so if you're of Indigenous descent, there is that opportunity to check that box, um, which is something we're always striving uh, for diversity and inclusion targets. Um, and we continue to strive to increase that. We, you know, I 
I definitely think it would be great to have uh, a large contingent of people who are really from this area and could really speak to some of the experiences. Um, but we have our, our associates are really from all around the globe. So it's, it's nice to, to see. And we do a, um, we do a cultural fashion show um, at different times. And it's great to see people come out in all their different like traditional uh, wear from wherever they're from, um, which has been really nice. But I think, you know, if people do want to reach out, they can reach out to people like me. I'm on LinkedIn. I'm sure you can find me. Um, but you do always have to go through the portal as well. But work your network, right? Like, I think that's something that sometimes gets lost in the digital age. Who do you know? And in the hospitality industry, it's really about being warm and friendly. So make sure that that's coming through. Don't just be a piece of paper. Um, you know, if you do come in and talk to the front desk, like that is an option, but we are going to direct you back to the portal at some point, just because we have to, to hit that check mark. I wanted to talk about the TV show. Mm. So the Western Bay Shore is an or is a is a hotel and sponsorships for different organizations are probably pretty rare and just wanted to talk about when that opportunity came to you for to sponsor the Bearsler TV show because there is no bigger sponsor than the Western Bay Shore that we had with the Bearsler TV show because you were generous enough the organization was generous enough to um, to sponsor 18 hotel rooms, actually more than that, I think 21 or 22 hotel rooms for our core judges, and then also 18 entrepreneurs from all over Canada that were traveling from Ontario to um, from the from Halifax, and a lot of these entrepreneurs have never been to Vancouver before. And I think when and I know the week that they came, that it was beautiful. It was 30 degrees. There wasn't our stereotypical rain that everybody is used to and they just had the most amazing experience to come during um during a beautiful season last year just to to uh, go back in the past last when we were filming season one it was a pandemic mm -hmm. we had just had a show we just got approved for a show with a very stringent budget so everyone had to come and we had hotel rooms in North Vancouver and, and what have you, but they had to make their own way here. Mm -hmm. And we were very lucky this year that we were we could afford flights and, of course, be sponsored. So it's great that you can get to Vancouver, but where are you going to stay? Were we going to do Airbnbs or what we were going to do? And you generously and the Western Bayshore came up with, why don't we give you luxury suites at our hotel and give you the best experience because it's nerve wracking when you're on a TV show. And we'll talk about you being a coach and how that is when all the cameras are in front of you. Mm -hmm. But being able to put all your chips in and, and, um, and sell your business and audition your business. So how did you come up with this idea and, and why is it important for the Western Bayshore to support such programming like this? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so, I mean, when the, when the opportunity came up, um, it was, it was definitely a discussion within our team because it was, it's a large financial commitment for us, um, for this number of rooms, but also the opportunity, um, to really show our support for not only the Indigenous community, but also Indigenous entrepreneurship. Like it's, it's such a cool concept. Um, I really like, the idea of coopetition and that really resonated with our leadership team. Um, you know, it's 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 a little bit outside our our comfort zone. Um, this coopetition, but it's also like you know, if we're going to do something, we want we want to be in. Um, and so we're doing all these other initiatives and how can we really show our support is by putting our name on something like this and saying like, we support Bears Lair season two. It's, it is, it was our high season, um, which is, you know, rates are high, but this is important to us to commit um, to really kind of put our money where our mouth is and say, we can put our money behind this. So that I think was our biggest biggest discussion. And once we came to agreement that we really thought that this was important for us and to show all of these things that we're doing, but that we're also a good partner. Uh, I, I just think that the ripple effect of making a decision like that and how it changed 
just the the energy of being nervous. And we had the entrepreneurs, we were filming in North Vancouver and all of the entrepreneurs getting up every morning and getting a shuttle and having coffee together. And then after filming, going and having a meal with the other entrepreneurs that they hadn't seen before. And that's what we really elevate is um, is is what you mentioned, co-opetition. We purposely chose commu- entrepreneurs that were non-competitive mm-hmm. yeah. so that they could freely talk about their businesses with each other and not have, you know, this siloed hiding, you know, I don't want you to take my idea. So we really did that on purpose. Mm-hmm. And to be able to have a place like the Western Bayshore to to go and decompress and relax and spend some time together, share a meal, and then see the judges and be able to, you know, say hi in the hallway and and just have that even relaxed that state. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. And you know, one thing I think Gene and I always talk about is, you know, we we advise companies and and uh, on how to be involved and how to create inclusion and how to have you know a meaningful impact. And the one thing it really comes down to is in. You can't be half in, right? You're if you're in, you're all in, and I think you really demonstrated that. It's amazing what you did. Yeah, I, I, it's I can't even mm-hmm. like I mentioned you you the Western Bay Shore is the lead sponsor. There is no greater sponsorship than that. We're so thankful to every other sponsor, but that really was putting just like entrepreneurs. It's a really great synergy mm-hmm. uh, and serendipitous nature of putting all the chips in and saying we're in. Um, just like echoing what Dean said. It's amazing. Tell us about now included in the sponsorship Mm -hmm. is you being on the show as a coach. So national TV show coming in, not being (laughs) a TV personality. And you got to see some of these entrepreneurs in the hotel in your day to day but being able to come to a movie studio and then sit down and get hair and makeup done and and then giving these entrepreneurs some advice to cool their nerves a little bit. I know Dean was uh, was a coach on the show, so you both have this commonality. <laughs> Tell us about your experience and what your expectations were before and then uh, what your what your thoughts are after. Yeah. Um, I mean, it was definitely outside my wheelhouse. I'd never thought that I would be on TV in this capacity. Um, And I remember when I was speaking with our general manager about the opportunity and that we could submit a coach. And he said, who are you thinking? And I was like, oh, I don't know, maybe you. And he was like, no, you. So so I thought, oh, wow, really? Um, And I remember I was so nervous. Um, I drove, I live out in Richmond. And so it was a bit of a trek to get to North Van. but it was a, I guess, you know, sometimes the morning traffic can be add a little bit to your stress. Um, but when I got there, everyone was so kind and everyone just made sure um, that I was really comfortable, that, um, you know, I had whatever I needed. Um, it was a real treat getting my hair and makeup done. I'm not going to lie to you. That was uh, really nice. But the thing I enjoyed most was getting to know the contestants, like, what a cool group of people. They're so passionate about their individual companies. They were all so different and unique, but um, creative, really great business ideas, um, really well-spoken. Um, and then to get to see them throughout the week, because I filmed uh, relatively early in the week. So then, you know, I went to work, I went to my day job and walked around the hotel and I would see people and, and, you know, get to wish them luck and say hi. And, you know, I think, I think that's a, a nice part about this show too. It's not that competition you see, um, and some of the other things in the world, people are really supporting everyone else's ideas and it's genuine and it makes it feel, I don't know. It makes it feel a, a lot better to be a part of, I guess. And what was it like coaching? I mean, other than the lights and cameras that were right on us, it felt just like a discussion. Um, you know, what what makes your business Indigenous? What makes you excited about your, your product? Um, I do coach uh, a team um, of sales and marketing professionals regularly. And so it felt a little bit like, you know, things I would say to them. So things I would say on a day-to-day basis about, 
you know, what do you want to do? What's important to you? What's your message that you really want to get across? Think about what your superpower is. Like that's that's something that you you bring to the table. Um, and that's part of, I think, being a genuine person as well. Excellent. I know that the Western Bayshore supports entrepreneurism, not just on the performance level um, or the artist level, but if you go into your spa, if you go into your gift shop mm -hmm. and also gifts that you give that you really support entrepreneurs that way as well. So maybe you can talk a little bit more about that because supporting a TV show and then supporting the arts and, and music and tradition, but you also support from that micro entrepreneur level for different products. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's really, you know, shopping local, I think is, is great. Um, and that's one of the things. So in our gift shop, um, they're sourcing a lot of local products. Um, so people can pick up, yeah, you can pick up different things if you forgot to pack them, but you can also pick up a, a interesting and unique um, souvenir that you can take home to your family or to remember your trip. So there's a couple different um, local, but also indigenous um, scarves, uh, jewelry, that kind of thing are also available in the gift shop. Um, and then in the spa uh, on property, we have a Vita spa. And so they're an Ayur Ayurvedic spa. They do beautiful, beautiful treatments, but they have a lot of their own lines um, of different skincare, of different aromatherapies and things. And we partner with them. Um, and then we have uh, a team that goes out and sources things. Um, you know, we have a really nice gift that our uh, Bonvoy ambassadors are gifted when they come and stay with us. And they're actually indigenous source products um, from the area. And, you know, they get a little bit of a story about why we're gifting this, um, what to do with them, because they're things like salves and they're things like, um, you know, different bath bath amenities and that kind of thing um, that are unique to to this area, and that's where you would get them. And so, trying to tell that that full circle story about why you're getting this, but also why it's unique to this area. Amazing, you know, you've put all this effort into and a lot of planning into creating this environment that has this this feel of Vancouver. I don't mean Vancouver, but you know the 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 indigenous you know environment of it and. Um, do you have any vision for the future, any plans where you can, you're going to carry this on or how are you looking at that? Yeah, I mean, I, I think, you know, we we continue to grow. We continue to learn. Um, we continue to look for opportunities. We've got some things coming out with our honeybees this summer. Um, we do a kids cooking class um, last year. Uh, our culinary team purchased an urban cultivator where they can grow their own herbs and grains that they put on salads and things. So we're always kind of looking for the next, the next thing, um, the next how to, and then how we can be a good partner. But what are our guests looking for too? Um, that's, that's a big thing. Sometimes I think our guests, they might not know what they're looking for yet because maybe they've never been here. Um, so is it, is it a tour that they can do in Stanley Park or something to learn a little bit about, um, you know, there's some great tour companies out there that are doing indigenous walks and tours. Um, there are some great things in the area. So really this year we're looking for those partnership opportunities um, and how we can direct people uh, to different, different tourism outlets uh, in the area and be a good partner. Yeah. And I think, you know, it's one of those things that's, um, you can feel it, mm -hmm. right? When you go into, you know, we work with some businesses, you feel like these people really don't know what they're doing, um, but they want to, mm -hmm. right? But, you know, when you walk in, you know, to the Marriott, you really don't feel that, or feel that way. Or, sorry, to the Western Bayshore, you don't really feel it, feel that way at all. You feel like they know what they're doing. The staff is educated. They really want to bring it in there. And how do you, how do you increase corporate culture in respect of, Indigenous teachings and learnings. And I know that we spoke with the Indigenous Garden about the chef um, talking to Cease, um, the curator of that garden, um, about using some of the herbs and using some of the Indigenous medicines, either in, it could be drinks or it could be um, in, in, the, in the, the food that people are eating. Mm -hmm. And they'd be able to talk about that, but also... Um, just learning more. Is there any kind of program or any kind of informational 
booklets out to the staff? Mm -hmm. So we we do have a diversity and inclusion training that our associates take. Um, it's not specific to the area that we're in. But one of the things we've been looking at is a full management. So our management team's about 70 people um, and hosting a Indigenous culture awareness um, program with them directly. Part of that is we do so much uh, with the community already. We want to make sure that everyone is uh, aware and and trained well. Um, but I think it's also like, what what are the opportunities? And so we continue to evaluate them as they come up and we continue to to look for the next opportunity. Um, I think we're we're not saying we're done where we are. Um, we want to keep looking and we want to keep pushing the boundaries. Nice. Do you have you ever considered for the future? I know that when you go to different hotels and if we go to Mexico or if we go to Hawaii or what have you at a resort hotel that you would have signups for canoe journeys. So for for example, for indigenous tourism, like maybe developing some sort of uh, partnership or collaboration with Indigenous Tourism Association Canada, where they could recommend some certified because what they do is they do the due diligence. They their companies that they recommend uh, fulfill the criteria of um, insurance and and they've they've got it dialed down. So we were talking about collaborations with different businesses mm -hmm. as collaborating with them just as a resource so that you could during the months of June to September, when the weather is somewhat decent here, except for January in Vancouver, but participate in having um, legend walks or kayak opportunities where the provider could come and pick the guests up and then take them to a spot and then bring them back. Have you thought about anything like that? Mm -hmm. I think we are exploring that more this year. Um, and definitely we, you know, I would be interested in, in, in learning more. Um, I wouldn't pretend to be an expert, but those are some of the things that we're talking about in planning for this summer season. How can we you know, who, who, who is out there who's doing this well and who's already set up to do this so that we can make sure we're referring guests that are coming in and asking about it to the right people? Um, and where can they pick up? That kind of thing. Excellent. And I guess, I guess for the last question is if you are an Indigenous entrepreneur, if you've got jams, candles, salves, products, anything like that that you would like to present to the Western Bayshore to have either in the spa or the gift shop or having for your Bonvoy gifts mm -hmm. uh, for the future, how do they come across and how do they approach you? That's a good question. Um, you know, I, I again, I'm on LinkedIn. You can definitely find me there. Um, you can reach out to the hotel. Um, my business card is at the at the front desk. Um, but you know, I think people people can reach out. Um, my team, uh, we have a marketing team who also helps curate that. We have a number of um, Indigenous entrepreneurs when they come to events at the hotel. There's often a circle of trade. I will usually circulate. The circle of trade myself. Sometimes I do some shopping, um, but also like that's a great way to start showcasing items uh, to us. But if if someone wants to reach out and whether they get to me uh, via LinkedIn or something or through Bear's Lair, I'm happy to look at it. I can't say we'll we'll take everything on, but um, you know we have to make sure it's you know made to a food safe standard and all those governmental regulations as we are a big organization. But happy to look at it. Excellent. I know that it have, you have to have capacity, you have to have competitive pricing, and, and it has to be a quality product. So interesting. So if uh, our audience is listening and you're an Indigenous entrepreneur and you are interested in hosting an event, if you are interested in, if you have a dance group, um, if you have being it that within the traditional territories, of course, of, of the nations, uh, Musqueam, Squamish, or Slay the Tooth, if you are an artist that might want to give some sort of presentations or some storytelling, or an entrepreneur that might have some products that would be interesting and you would want to make available and get your business out, then you can contact Lindsay Stock at the Western Bayshore, Vancouver. Again, she is on LinkedIn. Uh, you can phone the hotel and get a hold of her, and or you can always call us or get a hold of us at uh, info at bearslairtv.com. And just want to thank you so much for joining us. 
we really do need champions and and reconciliation or what we call reconciliation action is about two hands joining together, whether it's indigenous or non-indigenous or what have you, whatever cultures, because really what the Western Bayshore is doing is it's, it's, it's sharing the same core values as indigenous people. It's really uplifting each other. It is uh, supporting the environment, sustainability, and just the, the corporate culture being elevated. And uh, it's about knowledge and it's about sharing knowledge. So you're a champion and you're a cheerleader and so much love for you, Lindsay Stock. And thank you for being such a big supporter and an Indigenous champion. Well, thank you so much. It's, it's a pleasure and it's been such a great experience. So I look forward to it. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for listening to Beyond the Lair. Please follow us, download this episode and follow us on social media on Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn and TikTok.